Hey everyone, welcome to the stream. Hey, hey. Uh, yeah, let's do this. So today we're going to work. Uh, we're doing a workshop on how to draw from your imagination. Um, make sure you have a pencil and your sketchbook ready, and let's draw together. So, um, well, yeah, uh, so many are joining live. Uh, hey guys, we've got Dally Doodles, Hannah, Ella's joining. Hey everyone. Um, I just wanted to say. If you're watching the recording, that's absolutely great as well, because you can join in with all the sessions, um, you know, uh, after they go live as well. Um, if you're new, we go, we do streams and challenges every uh, twice, twice a month, um, with the aim to get you painting, get you drawing, improving, and, and having some fun together. So uh, welcome. You can join the, uh, you can share your share your work. Uh, with the hashtag Jake's Art Club on Instagram. And we're starting to build a nice little community there. Uh, it's really great to see people, you know, um, liking and commenting on each other's work. And, and really, it's really encouraging and great to see. So thanks so much. And do check that hashtag out in, on Instagram. Um, yeah. Uh, brilliant. Let's do this. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you like the stream um, so you don't miss out on any of the videos. Let's look at the schedule. Right, so what we got coming up, we've got what is imagination? Take a dive into uh, a bit of philosophy. Then confronting our fears. Okay, really important, really important. And we're gonna warm up, get the blood moving, get get our arms moving and, and, and get rid of that white off the page. Do a nice warm up. We're gonna look at symbols versus forms. Forms in perspective, fun with simple shapes, so loads of stuff. That all important tea break. Hi everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah, how to build your visual memory after the break, really important. Okay, really, really key for, for drawing from imagination. So stay with us. And I've gone, I can't wait to show you this blueprint uh, sketching workshop. So we're gonna really put you to the test um, after the break. And then we're going to review your challenges from last week. And I love your challenges. Amazing, incredible sub submissions uh, to the kind of juxtaposition or, no, you know, it's a like combination, isn't it? Yeah, combining different animals together to create your own species. Some wonderful stuff. I can't wait to share it with you. Um, okay. Yeah, it might seem like a lot, but let's jump in. Let's give it a go. Um, we're going to have some fun, learn a bit. And uh, for the next two hours, we're going to be drawing together. So here we go. Right. What is imagination? Okay, let me know in the chat what you think, what springs to mind when I say imagination. Okay, I want to hear your ideas of what you think imagination actually is. Um, is it conscious? Is it subconscious? Okay. Is it... Is it faults from that we've experienced through condition, the sort of conditioning in our lives, you know, uh, our experiences and everything? Uh, is it like kind of these uh, random faults that we're getting and 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 making making up? Is it is it juxtaposition? Is it creative thinking? What what do you think? Ella says what you can see in your mind. I love that. Right, we're going to be doing that today, exactly. So has anyone had that frustration of they've got it in their mind, they can see it in their mind, but they can't put it on paper or at least put it down as well as they would like to. So we're going to try and get, get to that today. Um, oh, I love what Rose said, the individual and creativity in everyone. And that's the beauty of it. Wonderful. Your perception of things, how you understand things, your point of reference. Nice one, Donique. Stuff you've never seen before that's in your head, Poppy says. Cool. Creativity set free. 
Serge says, cool. I like it. I want, you, I want, to, I want to talk to you about, really quickly, um, if we think about the Stone Age, and we think about the first ever um, tool that was uh, kind of chipped away from some stone, we, as humans, we must have had the, the, the vision to create something new. So we took something and we created something new out of it. And that had never been done before. And so I imagine that that's imagination, you know, seeing something that wasn't there before. Um, anything else? Yeah, problem solving, images in the mind. Jasmine says dreams. That's just the first word that came to mind. Brilliant. Being able to turn an object and seal the angles and changing it. Lovely. Okay, so we've got real good understanding. I think it's interesting to see we all have, we all have different different ideas, but generally I think we're we're on board. So I put together a little analogy of what we're going to do today. Uh, we're going to we're going to use visual a visual library and our knowledge of perspective, and we're going to combine them together to make a drawings from imagination. Okay, and that's so the visual library is like our long term memory. Okay, so. If we're looking at a reference and then looking down at the page, that's short-term memory and we can quickly check back. No, we need this long-term memory. We need that to be sunk in and we need to know what things really, really look like. And so important that we, we have perspective. You know, this is, this is what's gonna make things kind of pop off the page and, and, and come to life. So we'll look at them two things. We're gonna start with perspective and then jump into how to create that visual library. And before we start, um, I just want to talk quickly about um, fear as well. Okay, so confronting fears. So my experience of drawing from imagination, I've always been terrified of it. You know, um, I'm much more confident drawing from a reference and and it, it really is like a mental block. I'd love to be able to create, uh, you know, figures, comic books, everything, but I've always, always uh, been so constrained to references and going out and taking photo references. And that's not a problem. I would just like to uh, build that. And that's what we're going to try and do today. Um, so yeah, it's scary. It can be difficult. Um, and I think the fear of failure stops us drawing from imagination, you know, when it's so much easier just to, to copy something, copy a picture. So it's going to be difficult. It's going to be like working out in the gym. Okay. It's going to start off really hard. Uh, start off really difficult, but then eventually it will get easier and easier. And but some of you I know don't have that fear of creating and drawing from your imagination. And, and some of you I've seen, you know, have these wonderful, wonderful minds and just are able to to get, you know, without kind of restraint, get it on the paper. But perhaps you're looking for more depth and more more life in your drawings. Perhaps they're a little bit flat, and you'd like to to really bring them. To life, you know. So, so wherever you are, if you're in the fear stage, or if you're you, you, you're drawing, but you want to improve what you're drawing, this this session's for you. Um, yeah. So, yeah. If we can see it on our head, we should be able to put it on our paper, right? Let's do it. We're going to challenge the sphere, push our limitations, and uh, yeah, I'll show you what we we need to learn. So. I just wanted to, one, one more thing on that, that I've got like an example of a rhino, okay? If I imagine, get you to imagine a rhino now, so we know it's got a kind of like a pyramid, no, what's it called? Like a cone shaped horn on its, on its head. It's kind of got like a chunky body. Uh, but apart from that, I'm a bit lost as to what a rhino looks like, like actually. You know, what's the face like? What's the eyes? What's the ears? So we could, we could think, okay, the body's like a cow, but how do we draw a cow? You know, like, like it's like a big, so it's about, it's about breaking that down and making that really understood and, and good knowledge in our brains so that when we come to draw whatever it is, come to draw a rhino, a horse, uh, a train, we know and we, can, and, we, and we know what we're looking for. Okay, so let's get started. I'm just gonna, we're gonna do the warm up, five minute warm up. We're gonna do something from nothing. So get your sketchbook out. Get your, your pencil, and we're gonna do five minutes of this. Just kind of scribbling on the page, okay? So lightly scribble over the page. 
but try not to try to vary your lines okay so try and make it not all just curves do some straight lines do some angles okay like this all over the page and then we're going to take we're going to try and find something in this okay you might have done this before where you kind of in school where you kind of color in in between the lines it's a lot of fun but once you've got once you've got a scribble on the page I want you now to use your imagination to try and find something in here it might be a few objects it might be a, might be a, a creature it might be a face so here I can see a nose and a, and a, and a, and a face I'm going to just render that into a face um, so yeah do your scribble and then work into the drawing okay let's just get get something on the paper so here we go so little nose imagine some some glasses and a funny ear there we go oh there's a little haircut for him there Okay, so you can see I'm taking that bit of the scribble and I'm going to try and make something out of it. That could be a tie. How long have we got? We've got three, three and a half minutes left. A few stripes on the tie. Uh, what else can I find? What else can I see? Maybe you need to turn your paper to find something. Um, I can see a sock here. Maybe, maybe a smelly sock. Um, what else? Oh, there's a love heart. It's upside down, but it still counts, right? Maybe that's a metaphor for something. Um, couple more minutes so you can either carry on rendering what you've done and make it look really nice what am I doing with the mouth there or just keep going around and keep finding interesting things mm, that looks like a flag flag pole it's got the union flag there um, what else don't be afraid to turn your page Ooh, something here look at this like a bird or something Looks like an angry bird. Got a minute left. find anything rude in your scribble. Hey bro. It's the resolution on the camera. Quite right. Yeah? Do you want to check? Yep. Oh no, I put it on the large one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I did. Cool, so 20 seconds left. suitcase or something cool okay there we have it we've got a page full of imagined sketches with 
gone into our the depths of our subconscious and 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 uh, and created these 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 things. I've got a smelly sock. Obviously, need to do my laundry. Um, maybe the the office guy here is because we're we're not at work at the moment. I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, we can read into that another time. Cool. Oh, I've broken my pencil. So, well done. We've warmed up. We've got something, uh, something from nothing. We've got something on the page, and well done. You've drawn from your imagination already. So fantastic. We're off to a strong start. Now, I just want to talk to you about um, symbols and form. So, when we when we learn to draw, uh, kind of as as children, we. Um, we're sort of experimenting with that. We often draw in, in with, with symbols, okay? So in the middle here, we've got kind of photo reference. We've got reality, reality. Uh, sorry, the camera's waving about a bit. And I'm gonna do on the left some, some symbols, and on the right, I'm gonna create some, hold on a second. There we go should stop wobbling now and on the right so symbols on the left and on the right I'm gonna do some try and draw some things with form okay so if you want to sketch along with me feel free to but really I'm just gonna give you some examples so when we're when we're children we might think of heads as balls little balloons and hair as kind of mop mop hair very stringy and we want to draw in every individual strand tires we might think you know, we might think, oh, they're round, but really chunky, textured. Oh, I've gone away a bit. I was looking at the comments. Really chunky, uh, textured kind of, you know, like that's a gear or, or a tire, textured rubber. And this is because when we're, when we're children, we, 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 we discover our world through touch. Okay, so we, we're, we're, when we're toddlers and, and we're, we kind of put things in our mouths and we touch and we discover what things are, okay? So we kind of expect them to look like this as well because that's how they feel. And then for a hand, you might you might do something like this, you know, some sausages, which, you know, it, it can be quite a nice stylized way to draw. I'm not knocking it at all, but it's interesting to know, it's good to know that that's kind of um, symbols and when we're drawing with form, it's uh, a lot different. So with hair, we might draw, I'm gonna do like an area of hair here. We might actually draw the hair kind of waving down and looking at the light on it, we can look at it like a ribbon Oh, there you go. You see, so we've got hair waving down. You know, a head, we might not do a balloon. We could do something like the, the Loomis head, okay? So where you're cutting off the sides and really trying to understand the form of the head. Okay, so that's, that's straight on. This is to the side. Okay, so we're trying to understand the form of the head. Now, um, wheels, we can understand that wheels often aren't flat, they're not like discs, but they, they have perspective on them. Okay, so we, we can start with ellipses, make like a cylinder, you see, and we can, we can turn this into the wheels of a car. Um, by, by making these forms, these these uh, representations, okay? And then a hand, we might approach that by, we did hands, didn't we, a few weeks ago? Um, I'll put a link to that on the video. But we might start that by making a box for the palm, finding where the fingers lie. You see, so we're much more methodically thinking of these objects instead of uh, just their, their surface texture. 
Okay, I've got some more examples of form. So here's like a little over, over drawing. We've got this house and we've you can see how I've simplified it into a box. And we've got the, the, um, the roof coming up into the middle of the box. So really, really simple, really important that we get that clear structure of the house. Next, the tree was, so I've simplified that into a ball, um, just a sphere. And trees have these wonderful different shapes and wonderful different um, kind of physicalities and, and you, you can describe them so easily with, with, different, uh, with different shapes. And look at that trunk there, a nice cylinder. So it's really good to start thinking about objects, thinking about everything like this, especially when drawing from imagination. And here we've got a car. So I've kind of crudely shown you how you might start drawing a car with a box and uh, uh, working out the cylinders for the wheels. Um, uh, Poppy says she still does sausages. Brilliant. <laughs> I, had, I had sausages for tea, so great. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, so really important that we, we work with form, okay, and perspective. Um, and we're going to jump into perspective now. Um, here we go. So we're going to draw um, one point perspective and get through, run through, get the basic perspective um, points down so that we can start drawing and, and unlock that freedom. So here we go. So here's a train track, really, really clear one point perspective. I've put up this overlay on. We've got a horizon line there in blue, our vanishing point. And the train tracks are converging towards the uh, the vanishing point. Okay, so these are these are converging lines. So horizon line or eye level, vanishing point, and converging lines. They're the things that we need to uh, remember when we're we're talking about perspective. So let's give it a go. Oh, there we go. We're going to. I'm going to show you really quickly how to draw. I'm going to bring this down a little bit to get a bit of a better angle. Hold on a second. Better angle for drawing, make sure we're in focus. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to take you through how to draw in one point perspective. We're going to draw a box. And then I'm going to set you off for a couple of minutes and you're going to draw lots of different boxes and forms in one point perspective. Okay, so here we go. Um, start. We can start with our horizon line. So from one side of your page to the other. Sorry, my camera looks a bit wonky. The line's straight in front of me. <laughs> um, so one line across the page. Now we want to, um, hold on a second. Let's bring this over here. There you go. That's a bit better. Straight line now, hey? Make sure we're in focus. There we go. Okay, so we've got a nice straight line across the page and we're going to put a vanishing point in the middle. Okay, this is our vanishing point. Vanishing point. Uh, not this, I didn't mean to put one there. Okay, so one straight line across the middle and a vanishing point. And when we're drawing a one point perspective, we have converging lines just going to one point, one vanishing point. So when we're doing boxes, we draw that the, we have one face of the box facing us, okay? So we can draw a square like this on the page. And then from each corner, we draw a line to the vanishing point. So here we go. If you wanna draw along. Okay, there we go. There's our, there's our converging lines from this box. And now you need to judge how deep this box is gonna be um, on these lines, okay? so. We can judge with perspective. It's going to be about that, maybe a bit shorter, but about that light, about that depth of the box. Okay, we can come down, we can draw through 
the box. And there you have it, we've got a box in one point perspective. So I want you to go around now and put a few squares around the page. Okay, so a couple more down here. We've got this eye line, this horizon line. I want you to do some above the horizon line. Okay, I want you to see what happens there. Okay, so put a few boxes around and draw all your converging lines from all the corners and we'll, we'll see how we get on. So I'll give you two minutes to do that. Okay, so make sure we're getting these lines lining, lining up. We cut off the box. Right, there we go. We've got these one point perspective boxes and we can see through them as well, it's quite nice. Okay, let's see what happens when we do one above the eye level. So if we think eye level, this is where we're viewing from. So we can see the top of the boxes here. We're viewing from here, we can see the top of the boxes. So here, we should be able to see the bottom of the boxes. And we do, look. Can you see how that changes? So really nice. Simple perspective exercise. You've got another minute to draw some more boxes. Let's do one here as well. So start with that plane that's that face of the box that's facing us. And converging lines from the corners. Cut off, put these sides on. And you can find the inside of the box as well. Brilliant. Let's do another one here. Okay. Laura says, my brain's melted already. It's okay, we'll, we'll, we'll try and take it slow. So just to reiterate, you start with that first square. Then from each corner, head towards the vanishing point. Okay, then you work out how deep you would like the box by putting on these sides. And you can work out the middle as well. Okay, so really good exercise to come back to um, and just generally good practice to be drawing boxes you know all the time and we, we can and, and have this as, a, as you know muscle memory and we can turn these boxes into anything we want so we could put ellipses in these boxes turn them into little cylinders we could make them spheres we can spheres in there or um, you know we could make them little houses with like uh, so you can cut into the boxes start with starting with boxes is such a good good idea now we're gonna have a put put this to the test and I'm gonna give you two minutes to draw a teacup in one point perspective okay so here we go two minutes so the eye level is the horizon line okay and that's where you're viewing the the thing from okay so actually let's put the eye line up here okay and I want to view my teacup it want I want my teacup to be below me okay so we put the vanishing point on I'm gonna draw kind of a rectangle shape because because a, a teacup's kind of not quite as tall as a square. Now, put in on converging lines from each of these corners. Now I've got to think, how deep is this? So actually, maybe something like that. Right. 
right? That's probably maybe the depth of the of the cup. So I've got this basic box shape now. I know I need a, a an ellipse on the, on the top of the cup. If you want to learn more about ellipses, look at um, the Art Club episode one, and I go through how to make ellipses kind of mathematically. Then little ellipse for the bottom of the cup. There we go, we're getting sort of a teacup shape. There we go. And we can put a little saucepan on here, perhaps, if we've got time. So, something like that, and a handle. Okay, so we've got, there we go, we've got a teacup in one point perspective. Okay, and someone asked about eye level, so I just want to go over that again. This is where we're viewing the, uh, this, this point here is where we're viewing the, the scene from. So we can see we're above the, the teacup. And if I was to draw, draw it above this, this eye line, we would see the bottom of the teacup, we'd see the bottom of this saucer. So this makes a, a nice view below eye level so that we can really see the shape of this, this object. Good, well done everyone. Cool. Um, what we've got next, two point perspective. So here we've got a street scene, a little example of two point perspective. And there we have the converging lines, the horizon eye level. Um, and you guessed it, two vanishing points, okay? Two point perspective, that's what it means. That's what it stands for. So let's have a go at drawing some boxes now in two point perspective, some boxes in different forms. Okay, um, here we go. So I'll get you started with the first one and then I'll set you off to do some as a little challenge. So we'll start again with the horizon line through, through your page. And I want you to put your two vanishing points as far away from each other as possible, okay? Because if we get our vanishing points too close together, things start to warp, okay? So things start to become a little bit kind of fisheye, uh, you know, something happens there. So vanishing point one, vanishing point two. Now, if you remember, we started, last time we started by drawing a square like this, didn't we? Now, I want it to be really clear, that's not how we're starting this time, okay? So not with the squares. So because we've, had that, we've added that extra dimension, we've added that extra vanishing point, okay? We're gonna start with the edge of the box. So here you go, uh, that's what I mean by an edge. Okay, I'm just gonna rub that out. There you go, so there's the edge of the box. And you take the top edge and the bottom edge and you're gonna to go to each vanishing point. So just make a rough guideline to each vanishing point. Yeah. Now, we need to, we need to, um, we need to uh, assess the width uh, of these boxes. Okay, so let's try and make it square. We need to judge that judge how wide this is going to be. You know, if you put the line here, it would be a rectangle. So you you could, you can play around with how, how deep you're putting them, them points. Now look, we've got some more edges here, 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 and here. So let's go to the vanishing point from the left side to the right side. And from these ones to the left, okay? So from the right to the left. Game Science, Game Time said, I came here to see if it would help me with drawing anime characters and buildings. Yeah, this is definitely gonna help with that. We're gonna look, at, we're looking at perspective. We're looking at um, uh, how to build our visual memory. So it's definitely gonna help you with that. Any sort of character design 
and, and build drawing from your imagination. So there we go, there we have it, our box. So we started with this front edge, top and bottom, away to the vanishing point, away to the vanishing point. Then we create, we put on them other sides, right? We put on these sides to the, to the cube. And then from them corners, we went to the vanishing points as well. Okay, and there you have it, right? I'm just gonna outline it to make it a little bit more clear. There's our box. Okay, and this, yeah, so there's our box. It looks a bit funny because we're right in the middle and we can't see that, that line's overlapping there. So now, I'm gonna give you three minutes. Go around this, okay, go, we've got our eye line here. Go below and above the eye line, okay, so you can start with these lines, put on a bunch of lines around the page. Okay, and let's see what happens. So these are the edges of the boxes. Brilliant, Laura, brilliant, good to hear. Finding two point easier than one point. Two points, the one we need. So that's great. So here we go, so we can start to, start to do this. And you don't have to draw the line all the way. You can start to guesstimate just to make these lines. There we go, there's a box. This one, so this is gonna be above, above eye level. So we'll see the bottom of the box. Look at that. You can see this bottom of the box. Really cool. Really cool. What about this one that's on the, on, the, on the eye level? What's that gonna look like? So Lucy says, is it possible that the vanishing point isn't on the horizon line? Yes, it is possible, Lucy. That's, we're gonna to get to that in a minute. That's when we start to rotate and tilt boxes, okay? So at the moment, all of these boxes are uh, kind of in the same position, but when we start to rotate things, they, uh, they do the vanishing points are not on the horizon line anymore. You're right. Or, or more, they have their own horizon line, which is different to the horizon line of the scene. So here, look, in the middle, we're not seeing the top or the bottom of the box. So we've just got these two planes, one, two. And there's no third plane that we can see. Let's do some more. There we go, we've got the three planes again. One, two, and three, because we've got three sides showing on this box. Okay, I'm gonna do one more. And I'm gonna try and guess this one, okay? So I'm not gonna draw the lines. And this is what kind of practicing this will, will help with, getting this kind of guesstimation right on the boxes, so I might have been a bit off, let's have a look. Not too bad. All right, so there we go, we've got two point perspective boxes. These ones I didn't do the inside as well, but you could be doing the inside, you see, and, and finding the inside of each one. That's probably quite a good idea. Can you see, so we can see through. And see see everything inside the boxes too. Right. Next test, we're gonna get you put this into action. We're gonna draw a a flatbed truck or a lorry. Okay. So I'm gonna give you two minutes. Start with your vanishing point. Uh, start with your horizon line. Sorry. Decide. Do you want the truck to be below you? in front of you or, or kind of above you. Okay, we put on the two vanishing points and we can start with a big rectangle. Okay, here we go. So I thought I was gonna give you three minutes for this one. 
So I'll, I'll give you a bit of extra time. <laughs> so we can start with that first, that front edge. I imagine this is a box. I'm going to draw it just below the horizon line there. Okay, so this is a, we've got our front edge, we're putting on this box. So now our truck, it's like, it's not a cube, it's like a long kind of rectangle shape. So let's put, let's make this a long rectangle. Okay, front of the truck. Or, you know, this could, this could be anything, can it be? It could be a long sort of barracks building, it could be a train. Great to start off with these, these boxes. Just thinking of a manual that likes uh, likes drawing trains. So now I've got my box that kind of looks like a truck, like a lorry, but I should think about the ratios. So they've got a real, real big kind of, they've got a cabbie at the front and then a real big um, container at the back, haven't they? And that container's not, touching the ground so let's lift it off the ground there and what about the cabbie it kind of we can cut into this box okay so we can come we can come down there's the windscreen there's the front of the truck do that on both sides make sure we're lining up with the lining these points up with this vanishing point you see we can put on Put on a wheel, put on some wheels. Okay, and we've just run out of time, but I said I was gonna give you a little bit longer. So let's spend a little bit more time just making these lines clear so that we can see our truck. Okay, so. And it's got like these kind of wing mirror bits on it, hasn't it? So very basic. I need to, you know, we haven't got the visual memory of the trucks yet. It's quite a basic thing, but we can uh, kind of put near enough the shapes. And it'll say Coca-Cola along the side. Okay, so we've got the truck there. Well done. And once you're done, of course, you could always rub out your construction lines and you've got your, your image in perspective. Um, just another thing on two point perspective, I'm going to talk about how to tilt and how to lean uh, boxes. So um, no, not lean, uh, we're doing, we're spinning them. I forgot what, yeah, we're, we're spinning boxes and we're gonna, we're gonna tilt them. So here we go. There's our horizon line. And just for this exercise, I wanna show you like this, vanishing point one, not quite at the edge and vanishing point two. Okay, and I'm gonna draw a box here. So this is just as how we did it before, all the same. Okay, here's that box. And we can see it's in that kind of standard position. It's not been rotated, and we're gonna attempt now to rotate that box. Okay, so I can draw, draw another one uh, just in front of it perhaps. And what we do, we move the vanishing points, okay? So we can put our vanishing point two here and our vanishing point one here, okay? And that's gonna angle this box. I'm gonna draw it a little bit bigger because it's gonna be in front of this one. Okay, it's gonna angle the box um, differently. So you can 
can see by moving the vanishing points, I have spun the box round. Okay, so there's our original box. And this one has kind of rotated around just slightly. Okay, so that's how we rotate things. We we move the vanishing points, okay? Because they, they're not always gonna be going to the same vanishing point. Um, quite often when people teach um, perspective, you know, the, everything in the image is going to one or two vanishing points or three vanishing points. But actually in real life, you know, roads uh, go up and down, cars are parked wonky on the street. So this is what happens. This is what you need to do. You need to shift your vanishing points across and that will help. Um, you you tilt, and if you if you noticed, um, we're like much closer to this vanishing point, so we can see less of the kind of uh, this side. Okay, so if you imagine if we were right up to this vanishing point, we would see um, we wouldn't see that 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 plane. Okay. It would be something like this. So this this plane is 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 non-existent. Okay. So yeah, depending on which way you want to to tilt your object, you put it towards the different vanishing points. Now, what about leaning something? Okay, we've we've twisted it, but what about leaning it? Good good question. So uh, why am I saying good question to myself? Honestly, uh, there we go. Let's put on our two vanishing points, vanishing point one, vanishing point two. And let's have a go at uh, tilting. Okay, so um, let's put a box here. Start with the start with the edge. Okay, so there's our box, but I want to tilt it. I want it to be, uh, let's say I don't want to see some, so much of the bottom of the box. I'm going to bring the vanishing points up. Okay, so we can draw, draw it again. So there we go, we've got we've tilted this box I mean, you can see we've got less, less of the bottom here. Okay, this, this plane here, we can see less of it. What about if we want to see more of it? Okay, so, um, well, we can uh, bring these vanishing points down. Okay. I'll do it up a little bit higher than that. Okay, and then we can see even more of this underneath. Okay. I'm rushing through, sorry. So medium, less, and more. And that's depending on moving these uh, vanishing points. Obviously, I've moved this box, so I had to bring down the vanishing points a lot further than I would have to um, uh, to, to, see, to see the bottom of it. So let me know if you have any questions on, on that as well. Let's see if I can focus the camera again. God, that should be a little bit better. What pencil am I using? I'm using Faber Castell 9000 series. It's a 4B. I've got a link to these in my description. They're a really lovely, smooth pencil. I really, really like it. Um, and I've sharpened it with this blade. Uh, and we've got the 
I've got the video for how to sharpen pencils on the channel as well, so you can check that out if you haven't already. Um, okay, where are we? We did the tilt and the lean, rotating the tilt. Right, so you're getting a bit bored of, um, that was <laughs> rotating and tilting objects. We're getting a bit bored of uh, lines, perspective lines. Oh, oh phew, you know, oh, life doesn't, there's, there's too many rules and lines and oh, I just want to draw, I want to be creative, I want to have fun. Well, I hear you and you know, w once you learn these concepts, uh, we can we can use them without like drawing the, 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 the lines and, and, and drawing everything out. Okay, so we can just kind of feel it and we can kind of, uh, as I said, you know, guesstimate where these perspective lines are gonna be. So let's have a go at doing that now. Okay, we're gonna get rid of the lines. We're gonna be thinking about them, keeping them up there, but we're gonna be being more freer with our drawing, okay? Because I would hate to, you to go, for you to go away from this and at the start of every drawing, draw perspective lines. Okay, no, we want that same amount of freedom and that jumping in and, and everything. Because when we do that, we, uh, you know, it can be good for architecture and different things, but sometimes it can, it can make our drawings kind of stiff. So here we go. Ella likes the lines, brilliant. Um, Poppy likes them too, oh, there you go. No, that's good, that's really good. I'm glad you like them. Cool, now let's go into doing uh, this kind of, I call it the teddy bear exercise. And you can see why. Uh, so what I've done is I've taken this teddy and I've looked at it and try to, try to, this is essentially a blueprint for the teddy, okay? So I've tried to work out what is it made of? What are its fundamental forms? What are its fundamental shapes? Um, and here down the bottom, you can see I've got, I've done this, um, you can draw these with me if you like. These I've got, I've got this sphere for the head, okay? And I've got these wrapping round lines, okay? Similar to uh, an orange with some rubber bands, okay? We've got these contour lines wrapping around this orange and that's gonna help us um, see where to place things on a circle, okay? I've also, there's these kind of half moon shapes for the ears. Um, there's a wedge, isn't there? There's wedge coming out for the nose. There's cylinders for arms. Okay, so just give it a go. Draw, draw some of these body parts. Um, and I noticed the body was kind of quite pear shaped. Okay, it wasn't like a, a ball, like the head, but it was quite pear shaped. So it was thinner at the top and wider at the bottom. And we can put these um, contour lines around this as well. So what contour lines are essentially is if you imagine cutting something in half, it's the slice of that object. Okay, you imagine we slice this pear in two. We slice this, this head in two here. We would, we would see that shape. Or you can imagine, you know, something wrapping around. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take all these objects and have a go at just drawing them in different uh, kind of positions. Like this, but now we're gonna do five minutes and I want you to draw this teddy bear, but in a different configuration. So we know that we know what it's made up of. Uh, these simple shapes, but now let's do it in a different a different pose. Okay, not diff if it was a different configuration, it'd be like uh, the, the potato head man, you know, where you've got the, the foot on the on the head and all sorts. Now we're gonna we're gonna do a different pose. So you know, you could have him standing, you could have him, you know, jumping up, saying hi. Um, so whatever you can think of, we're gonna have a go at doing that. I'm gonna start the timer, and I'll be back in one second. I'm just gonna grab a drink of water. Okay, I'm back. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. 
Hey, not the camera. There we go. Okay. Just gonna go up slightly. So, if you haven't already, have a go at drawing the body parts separately and then and then create this pose, okay? So, the head, the, the head is a, a sphere with, with some eyes. Um, you know, the, the nose is kind of like a box, you know, coming out of the, out of the face. Got these ear shapes, got these cylinders for the arms pair and the legs the legs are kind of funny because they're kind of like cylinders but they they're small at one end and they're big at the other end okay and then it kind of rounded off so if you imagine kind of like a horn or something like that that's how they're looking or like a drumstick <laughs> dally doodles you can put you can put his legs on his head if you like that's absolutely fine let your imagination run wild Okay, here we go. Let's have a go at doing this bear. So I'm going to I'm going to have him standing up and waving, I think. So circle for the head. And let's have that circle for the head. He's going to be looking up. I don't know why he's looking up, but he's going to be looking up. Pear shape for the body. Um, where did these legs connect? that arm, that cylinder for that arm, kind of falling behind his body. And then this one, this arm is going to be up in the air, waving. Hey! So I'm imagining these are cylinders and kind of rounding them off. Maybe I'll change the way he's looking a little bit. Look at us. Okay, so how do we put that nose on? Oh, I need to show you the drawing, don't I? There we go. So how do we put that nose on? It's kind of like a box shape coming out of the face. Some eyes. It has his ears. We won't see that ear because it's not connected there. This this shape coming round. He's got some pads on his little arms as well. Has his little nose. Okay, so there we go. There's our little teddy bear. I'm not sure what's going on with the legs here. I wanted this one to be behind, but perhaps it needs to be 
perhaps it can't be that far behind. Perhaps we need to see it where it's actually connecting. That might be a bit better. Um, yeah. Cool. And there's my little teddy bear standing there. We can have a little bit of shadow. How did you get on? You made him creepily look at your soul from the side. Brilliant. <laughs> did anyone put the legs on the head? So that's a little teddy bear exercise. And I just wanted to reiterate here that we're using these simple forms and we're trying to imagine them in space. We, you know, we, we broke down the teddy bear into its simplest things. Imagine them in space and then we managed to reassemble that in a new scene. So this is drawing from our imagination here. We're, we're using the reference, but we're you know, disassembling it, understanding it, and bam, there's a completely new image. Um, and you know, once you're finished with the structure, you can put on a direction of light and start to think, okay, which parts of the teddy bear are going to be in shadow? And you can keep, you know, you can keep rendering. So if you want to keep drawing um, as we take a little break, maybe you can put on your direction of light and keep kind of rendering and having fun drawing your teddy bear. Okay, we're going to be back in in uh, five minutes. So either carry on drawing your teddy bear, or you know make it nice and fluffy, or grab a cup of tea, grab a grab something to eat, uh, have a little meal in five minutes. I don't know. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, yeah. When we come back, we're going to look at how to build our visual library. Okay, so we've been doing quite simple, simple objects here, but now we're going to attempt to do more complex things. Okay, and things that we think we know how to draw, we can, we can imagine them, but really we don't know. We might not know. Uh, so we're going to build that visual library. Loads of great tips coming in a minute. Okay, uh, thanks for drawing with me, and uh, I'll see you in five minutes.
time for a Jake's Hat Club. I hope you're ready. Tips and techniques, every two weeks. 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 Okay, we're back. It's funny, I said you can have a meal in five minutes. We, we only just about boiled the kettle. <laughs> um, great, I've seen a few of your... Um, your teddy bears coming in. Make sure you hashtag, share them on Jake's Art Club on Instagram. It's great to see you drawing along. Uh, really good stuff. Now, where are we? We're back. Um, okay. So now we look at the perspective, uh, the simple forms, and kind of breaking free of the lines as well. Uh, and, and, and that blueprint of the bear. Really, really cool. Now, we need to build our visual library, okay? So more complex uh, objects, more complex things. So let's go back to this little analogy thing. So we've, we've got that visual library. We've, we've, got the, we've got the knowledge of perspective now. We need to build the visual library and that long-term memory, okay? So um, the, the, one of the problems is, is you know, um, is that analogy, isn't there, 10,000... 10,000 hours and you'll be a master of something. Well, 10,000 hours of drawing doesn't mean you can draw from your imagination, okay? Because you're quite often we go, we're drawing from reference and we're not taking in the information we need. Okay, so it's really important that we, we find that information. So just to show you an example, on the left here, I've got uh, a study that I did of um, Captain Picard and, you know, lots of fun to do you know really good fun but if I was to if I was to you know if I wanted to learn how to draw faces from imagination and, and really understand the form of the head just drawing uh, you know a celebrity drawing drawing from reference isn't going to help me it will help me somewhat it will um, but not as much as you know working out the structures of the of the, um, of the, of the head working out the structures of the the lips and, and, the, and the nose and everything and then with that knowledge you can draw better from reference as well and you can create your own faces okay so that's really what I'm saying we're kind of um, yeah we're, we're we're drawing not to look good but we're trying to to understand okay and we're gonna I'm gonna get you now to draw a really classic one okay we're gonna draw a bike from imagination Okay, so a bicycle. I'm going to give you two minutes. And now don't be afraid, okay? You might think, oh, a bicycle, oh, complicated. But actually, this drawing is going to give us the information of what we need to learn, okay, in the next stage. So we're going to draw a bike from imagination. Then we're going to do free practice studies where we're gathering information from references. And then after that, we're going to test our imagination again, test our visual memory, and we're going to draw a bike again okay so i'll give you two minutes and try not to copy what i'm doing on the page try and come up with your own uh you know test your own memory and here we go okay so two minutes drawing a bike so right so, we've got wheels um, how do the, how do the, oh, I just want to say happy birthday, Jelly, um, it's, uh, Jelly's, uh, birthday today and she actually got a bike. So I am trying to remember what it looks like, <laughs> uh, something like this. What's that structure like of the, of the, of the bike? Try and remember. Uh, 
Okay, I haven't practiced any of these. I'm doing these the same as you. Daddy Doodles is Dutch. He sees thousands of bikes every day. Brilliant. I'm expecting a fantastic bike. Drawn. Daddy Doodles. So something like this. I don't know. I'm. I'm. Uh, maybe it's this way. <laughs> I'm getting confused. And this is great. So I need to know the. I need to know the arrangement of the. The uh, the bars here in the middle of the bike. I think this looks a bit off. There's definitely some kind of chain, something going on there that I'm missing out. Let's try again. What is it? It's like this, like this. There's a suspension. Um, is it like, I don't know. See? So I oh. I've got brilliant information now. I know that I need to remember these bike poles and where the chain sits. Lots of different information that I need to gather from, from the bike references now. Okay, so well done. You have a look at your drawing, have a look, see where did you go wrong and what looks funny. And now we're gonna do our first bike practice. Okay, so. Let's fill a page. Let's try and keep these studies in one page, okay? And we'll use this page as our, our kind of blueprint page for a bike. Great, okay, look at this structure of the bike. I've got it totally wrong. So two minutes. Let's do it. Let's draw this bike. Okay, so here we go. The wheels are closer together than I imagined. That's coming up at an angle. This is going along like that. That's parallel with the handlebars. And this is coming down. A little bit forwards and then out. Okay, gotcha. Right. I've got, yeah, little disc brake things. Okay, it's looking much more like a bike. Brilliant. All right, so what? So I've drawn it, but now how am I going to remember it? So the wheels are closer together. I can start with a triangle like this. That splits into two. That splits into two. That's this kind of even simpler design of the bike. Because remember, we're not just drawing, we're not just copying the reference. We're really trying to ingrain it in our mind. Okay, so I'm thinking triangle, line, line. And look, oh, there's another triangle there. So we've got this kind of diamond shape happening. Right, next one, next bike practice. Another two minutes. So we've got another angle. We've got another, another thing, more things going on here. Got a bit more perspective, which is cool. And the wheels really are closer together than I imagined. That's great. Get them ellipses on there, the wheels. Look at how that front wheels, you can see a lot more of it. It's a lot wider because it's closer to the, uh, to, the, to the camera. There's the triangle. Oh, curved handlebars here, that's cool. I 
I'm getting the position of the wheels wrong, so I need to find the middle of the wheel and then draw, draw the wheels on, I think. I'm getting the wheels too high up. Funny little shape for the seat, aren't they? Ah, oh, then look at these handlebars. These are completely different. Like racing handlebars. Really cool shape. I would not have been able to draw them from memory. No way. I like we're getting a more confident bike shape. Hearing. Okay, next one, bike number three. So another tricky angle. More perspective here. So start with like a shape for the wheels to fit in in perspective. There's more perspective than that. I've got, to, got that a bit wrong. Go back to these suspension bars here. Right, where's the triangle? There. So what's happening with the handlebars? They, they look like rib, rib um, collarbones. They go along, then up, along, and then up. Okay, maybe I can look at a detail here that I can try and remember. So. I really like that part and then it splits in two. This is the suspension. So really try and understand the form here. carried away with details there that's not the exercise <laughs> but yeah I'd quite like to put that in my drawing I quite like that feature I've got to remember this triangle and then the opposite triangle on the back okay so now we've got this blueprint this blueprint page uh, filled with kind of uh, you know visual clues for us okay we didn't have to just draw drawings we could we could put uh, ratios, you know, so I know that the wheels are closer together than I imagined. All sorts of things like that. Any kind of notes you want to take, little notes, write little notes. Now, we're going to give you five minutes, and we're going to draw another bike from imagination. So turn that page, okay? Turn the page. Try not to look at it, okay? And do as best as you can without looking at the the reference, the kind of blueprint page. That should be imprinted in your mind now. Okay, and if you find yourself, um, hold on a sec, if you find yourself kind of um, really wanting to turn the page and look at it, I'll let you, okay? But just quickly, just quickly glance, collect that information. And what that's gonna say, is gonna point out the bits that we didn't remember enough, okay? So then the next time we do one of these sheets, if you wanted to carry on doing bikes, we're gonna do something else afterwards but if you wanted to carry on you could then 
you know, make sense of the bike seat if that was causing you trouble. You see? So let's do it. Five minutes. And we're not copying one of the images that we've seen. We're again, we're going to make one out of our imagination. Um, let's do this. So. I'm gonna start with something like this. Fairly, fairly uh, side on. Get some wheels in. This one needs to be. Smaller. Okay, so this triangle. Something like that. That isn't it? This break. Now this part that comes up, that goes there and then juts out. For the handlebars, it goes along. And out. Trying to remember. My wheels look too big. <laughs> what was the seat like? It was kind of like a triangle shape. With a th thicker bit of the back. Just trying to make sense of these poles and things now. side There's something wrong with my pedals I think they're too close to the seat bit at the front with the suspension so it kind of split into two cylinders like that something like that disc brake so we've got to bring this wheel in a bit smaller minute left. Gonna put on my wheels again. Okay. Yeah, the wheels are a little bit better. 
not much. Let's try and show some of the rubber. Okay, that's time up. Brilliant. Max has just run in, shown me his picture of a bike, and he's well happy. <laughs> Fantastic. There you go. So let's just take a look now. We've got five minutes up. Let's have a look. So that was our test page. That was my beginning. So have a look at your beginning drawing and look at the one after the test. So I can see I still got some trouble with my, my wheels and all sorts, but how that's a lot better than, than before, right? That's a lot better. I've really kind of started to understand the structure of the, the bike. And I hope that your, your drawing has had a, a similar improvement. Let me know in the chat. Let me know how, how that's coming on. Really good fun. So really challenging, but really good fun. And I like drawing these with the kind of, information building uh, style you know and i think that's a new way of sketching for me you know where we're not perhaps sketching for something to look good but we're just sketching to understand and that can be so much so much fun as well um here we go okay so there's the bike what have we got what have we got next what have we got next can anyone guess <laughs> that's it a crab okay <laughs> We're gonna draw a crab from our imagination. Okay, so have a think, what's the shape? What's the, you know, there's a shell, there's some legs, pincers maybe, you know, think about the last crab you saw and really have a go now at drawing it. Uh, there you go, two minutes. Grace said, Grace, Grace says our first drawing was terrible. Great, that's brilliant. That, that's the information we need, right? We need to know that that it's, you know, do that terrible drawing and then realize what it is you need to, to practice and, and to, to remember for that, in that blueprint stage, okay? So here we go, crab drawing. Um, I'm thinking like some kind of shell. Eyes, maybe eyes are on sticks, I don't know. The eyes on sticks on crabs? Then, kind of legs coming off like a spider. And some of them legs are gonna be big beefy claws. So we've got a minute, I'm gonna try and imagine what a claw looks like. And I kind of, I'm thinking, because we had some seafood uh, yesterday to celebrate Jelly's birthday. And I'm kind of thinking of like prawns and different things, the way they kind of interlink. They've got these weird, because crab legs have got like meat in them, haven't they? We didn't have crab legs, but I'm just thinking. There you go, so there's my crab. A few legs that side. There's the pincer. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Maybe there's a little, little worm that's trying to eat or something. Well done. You drawn your crab. Now, have a look at your drawing and think. Right, what is it that I need to know? So I'm, I kind of feel like these legs are a bit uniform. They're a bit kind of boring. I need to I need to pay attention to the legs. The shape, I kind of just went for like a disc or like a like an oval kind of strange shape. I think we can do better than that. I'm quite happy with the claw. That's that looks cool. But I'd be interested to see if the claws on these images are are quite different to that. So let's give it a go. Here's our first crab. Awesome. Oh, it's even 
It's even coming across. <laughs> uh, love this crab. Looks great. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes. Try and harness as much information from this as possible. So he's going to... The body is kind of like... Looks like a Frey Bentos. And he's got these weird bits underneath. Ah, so his eyes are on little sticks. Look at that. His eyes are on sticks. I'm glad I wasn't just losing my mind with that. So these legs are really interesting. Look at them joints. Ah, okay, so they're kind of coming out like that. I'm imagining that like, um, almost like ice cream cones linking into each other. Okay, so remember, keep reminding yourself, don't just draw, understand. Okay, so what's going on with this pincer? Let's have a look, it's like, let's draw one side on. Something like that. That's kind of what it looks like side on, and then this is this is connecting. Okay. Um, and what do the legs look like? They're kind of they're flat. And they get thin where they connect. It's good to know. Um, He's got like, I'm gonna try and remember that around his eyes, like uh, dark rings around his eyes. Or it could be a lady crab, could, could very well be. Okay, that's the two minutes in the first crab, next one. Ah, so a bit of a different species, well, different crab. giving us a little bit more description of the body. And maybe we can, it's kind of flat. It looks flat at the front. Then gets kind of thin and wraps around. And look at that lovely pattern on the back there, the way it's, kind of, I don't know. Yeah, kind of converging there like that. But can you see this kind of, it's kind of like a shell. Okay. So there's something I've noticed, the legs come right to the back. Look at that, right to the back and right from the front. So, Again, I can imagine these kind of wafer ice cream cone things. Really, really cool looking. Not sure what's going on with the claws there. But yeah, get rid of this eye. Look at them ones coming up the back there. That's cool. So I'm going to draw this from above. Flat at the front. Eyes. Doing that. Then there's legs like this. One, one, two, three, four legs, and then you've got the pincers. Okay, so I've got that. So I'm gonna remember four legs and pincers. Right, next one, last practice one. All oh, right, we can see under the crab here, it's kind of cool. 
so when you get if you if you if you're doing this with something else try and get different angles different different perspectives it's going to really help your your understanding so i'm going to start with that kind of flat front of the face What's the overall form here? I'm, I'm, I need to step back and think of forms. God, them claws are really beefy. little hairs on them that's cool I might try and put that on my crab in a minute so I'm gonna go back to structure work out what's going on something like that with legs We're going that way. Little eyes and big bulbous pincers. See this little cartoon, this little plan of the crab is going to really help me to uh, to make sense of it, hopefully. Right, that's it, time's up. Let's give it a go, take a good look at your blueprint page. So we've got the way they're connecting together, we've got this flat front of the face, we've got these sunken back eyes. That was the, that was the claw from the side. So almost a rectangle, cut off that bit. Right, let's have a go, let's have a go. Five minutes, drawing a crab from ima imagination and try to try not to look at your, your other sketches. Try if you can not to look at them. So, Crab to be kind of you know, looking up. Stuff underneath the crab, wasn't there? That's kind of body shape I'm going for. Looks like a flying saucer. Now, the legs, I'm going to start quite far back. Maybe it can be a monster crab, maybe it can be really big. Really big pincers here. Remember they were hairy. 
I'm going to put a few hairs on them. They looked hairy anyway. <laughs> I get smaller at the joints. Just got his little mouth. These weird, weird eyes. Two minutes left, right? So the claws, the claws came in together like that. How would it look from that angle? Something like that. Uh, maybe we can put our light direction on and do a little bit of shading to bring out the form. So on the shadow sides of these forms, we can just put some tone in, put some value in. Underneath the crab is gonna definitely be darker. Cool, bit messy, bit kind of spidery, bit weird, but you know what? Really fun to do. So these legs were kind of whoa, a bit more meaty. Quite like this, this coming in. So really interesting bit now. Let's see our original. Oh, that's a bike. There's my original crab. So. It's funny, you know, I would have said the original looked looked better than that, you know, but that coming back, looking at it again, it looks so kind of quiet, so small. You know, this claw isn't big and scary at all, is it? And these are all so uniform. And and let's look at scary crab, scary big old crab. Um, if I was gonna do this again, I would say, you know, keep, if I was gonna keep studying crabs, I really want to get that shape of the body, of the body down, so that I'm really 100% confident uh, of, of kind of what I'm drawing. So I would, I would look at there. So have a little look. Did you get anything, if anything you're not happy with, maybe you can note it down and, and remind yourself to study that if you wanted to carry on with crabs. But yeah. Pretty cool, big difference. Now we're gonna do one more, hope you're enjoying this. Um, so remember as we're doing these, making this blueprint page, uh, we're doing it quite quick, we're doing it, you know, kind of an exercise here. But if you, if you, were, if you were gonna, um, someone said they wanted to draw manga and they wanted to draw the human, human uh, forms, well, what I would do is really break the, the, the forms down and, and have like study pages that are full of these simplified forms. And you can look at, you know, Brigman, Loomis, lots of people that have, have broken down the human figure uh, in, in really clear ways. 
uh, and use them to help you. But you're always going to find that your way of remembering is going to be different. Okay, so um, yeah, don't just copy what these anatomical books do, but um, make your own blueprint, make your own sketches and, and because that's what's going to really bring it into the long term memory. If you're problem solving for yourself, it's going to ingrain it in your memory and you will be able to remember. And it's going to be quite funny, but I'd say in a week or so, try drawing a crab, try drawing a bike. And uh, next we're going to draw a helicopter. Try drawing them things and, and see if you remember any of this. And I, I bet you will. Right. Helicopter is our next one. So I'll give you two minutes. Draw your best helicopter. Here we go. Right, helicopter. So I'm thinking. I'm thinking in box with a tail. There's a repeller there. And then it's got little legs, isn't it? So little feet. Okay, so something like that. think what the cockpit would look like. I'm just gonna wrap around like a window. Put on a door. Something like that. Whoosh. <laughs> difficult, really difficult. Go. Cool. Well done. We've got our baseline. What do we need to learn? So I think I don't like my propellers. I think I need, really need to think about that. I've got like kind of a box shape for the helicopter itself, but I think I really want to be more descriptive and more, yeah, more knowledgeable of the shape. And then I'm really interested in, well, at how the feet come out. Maybe, you know, maybe they come out at an angle. Maybe they're more interesting and they've got like things attached to them. You see, and then and then what's going on here? I kind of just did a scribble because I'm not too sure. So I've got some things to look out for. Um, here we go. We've got our page, our blueprint page for the helicopters, and this is the first one. So I'll give you two minutes. Right, really quite a cool shape to it. It's like. a lot more aerodynamic than I had drawn. So one big curve at the top. Look at that cockpit. Okay, so it's climbing around the front there. Large front window with a curved glass. And then on the side, not so much, not so curved. It's bulges coming out of the shape, that's quite cool. So we've got a couple of bulges, it's like adding interest. Ah, look, I didn't even think that there would be a bit of, a bit of the body above the helicopter. So we've got the main chunk, then a bit above the helicopter to hold the kind of 
the rotor there a bit further away from the the cab than we realised than I realised. what's going on with these legs. So yeah, they do come out at an angle. They're coming out at an angle. And look at, they're even curved and shaped differently than I expected. Oh yeah, exhaust here, that's important. Look at that dome on top of the, on top of the wings there. Last few seconds. Ah, oh, interesting. So this propeller is like housed within. Look at that bit there. This propeller is housed within the tail. I was thinking it was stuck on the outside. That's quite cool. Okay. Right. There's my helicopter. Let's do number two. Let's go for number two here. I'm just going to adjust the camera. Yeah, something funny with our camera set up this week. I'll try and get that sorted out for next week. Sorry about that. But there's number one, and it's two minutes on number two. Uh, we've got a bit more. We can show a bit more of the cab here and more perspective so let's try and make it into simple shapes so I think I'm out of focus be quite helpful to run a kind of center line through your box if you're starting with a box to help guide you know line things up super difficult but it should have your brain firing on all cylinders and really working with the long-term memory. So this one's on the outside, look at that, that's much easier to draw. doors open there. Ah, oh, run out of time. Before we do that, before we carry on, let's just put these legs in, because these legs are so much different. Look at them. They're curving out of the side of this one, and they're creating like a double barreled shape, which is really fun. Okay, there's, there's our, uh, there's our two minutes. There's a dome on there. Really, really tricky to draw in two minutes, but I hope you got some more information, at least of the, the cab size in relation to the, the, the wing, different, different uh, legs, this little dome on top of here. Let's give it a, oh, we're on the second one. 
Yeah, we've got a third one. Nice. I thought that was going quickly. So this is a great, really great angle for us to get some perspective in here. So I'm going to start with a box. Give you another minute. <laughs> Look at the propellers, they're kind of thick. There's like a mess going on there. And then they lead out, and some of them are, some of them bright, some of them are shadow. Again, we've got this curved legs. Really cool coming away. Use little guidelines to make sure we're parallel. Little bit more time. Look at that. Wow, wow, like an arrow. That's cool. And then this one's got st like stabilizers coming off the side. That's really nice. Try and put that in a helicopter in a minute. Okay, there we have it. That was a helicopter. I gave you a bit more time at the beginning. Um, Last test now, put all this knowledge together and we're making a crab helicopter bike. No, no, we're just gonna have another go at the, uh, the helicopter um, from a fresh page with a new, uh, new kind of invigorated visual memory. So let's look, yeah, really study, not gonna do that. I like these curves. I think this one's giving me the most information in the terms of the cab shape. Really like these wings and things. It's really interesting. Okay. Here we go. Five minutes. Last helicopter. Okay. How do I want to draw it? Crab helicopter bike would have been, would have been insane. Uh, although I've been giving you some pretty funny challenges recently. Wait until you see the combinations of animals. Something like this, thinner. It's a lot thinner than that. They weren't, the helicopters weren't very thick in width.
door was really cool because it was kind of descriptive of of the shape of the cab. I'm very like exhausts. So remember, we're drawing from imagination. It can be this is our, our own design of helicopter. So if you want to put lights on. You want to change things up. Go ahead. It kind of looks like a train at the moment. Let's put that top bit on. Yeah, so I still haven't got that cockpit kind of feeling right there. Let's try and put some legs on it. Wings coming off the side, that one, didn't it? That one was cool. Last minute. Oh, there's something going on there, it's wrong. Looks kind of frumpy, looks kind of funny. Um, put some light on it. Maybe the lights are what makes it look odd. Let's take them off. And there's kind of windows in the floor as well so that the pilot can look down. Add some more windows. Oh, we've run out of time. Put on some quick shade. Maybe it's on the ground, maybe it's on a nice helipad. Cool. There we have it, there's our Drawn from Imagination Helicopter, um, round two. So, where's the original? There's the original. Pretty lackluster, pretty didn't know what I was doing. We're after some, after some practice, after some blueprint studies, we've got another one. And, you know, sure, I've got a long way to go, but, you know, I'm, I'm quite confident the next time I come to draw a helicopter, I've at least got a starting point and I've got a, a basis of what to what to draw. And if someone, you know, if someone said, hey, draw a cartoon of a helicopter or I draw, I'm going to be able to access that, that, uh, that part and uh, that long term memory and, and maybe produce something. So guys, share your work. I'd love to see your sketches. Hashtag Jake's Art Club. And don't forget to mention me as well, jakebustle.art. If you share your work on Instagram uh, quickly, like in the next uh, next minute or so, we'll be able to put it up onto the stream. 
Oh, cool. Look at this. Oh, wow. Oh, this is awesome. Got a post from uh, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Who made this? Jelly made it. Oh, Jelly. <laughs> Thank you. Look at this, guys. We did it. We did it. We surpassed a thousand subscribers. <laughs> Jelly, thank you. That's amazing. You get the cardboard award. The car yeah, it's not uh it's not it's not the silver, we got the cardboard, we got a thousand. Guys, amazing. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. We did it. This is yours. Um <laughs> Brilliant, I'm gonna have to put that up here. I could put it up the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go, look at that. Pride of place. <laughs> Give me a cabbage. <laughs> we did it. Oh, amazing. So, uh, <laughs> I didn't expect that. Brilliant. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, send your work in. I'm going to go through the challenges now and, and a few other, other bits. And we'll, we'll, I really want to get to see your work, see some of these sketches. Um, <laughs> Thanks guys, thanks Rose. Thanks Laura. Uh, Jelly was asking for, for red paint and glue earlier. I was like, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> Amazing. Right, Patreons, thank you so much. Hannah, Corey, Nick, Laura, Karen, Cameron, Jane, Hannah, Nikki, Richard, Deb, Ian, Annie, Happy JL. Thank you so much, okay? You make this uh, all possible and we, uh, you know, you don't have to support, but the fact that you choose to really, really is amazing. And, and uh, I've got some exclusive sketchbook tours coming your way soon. Okay, we're always trying to think of ideas of what we can, what we can give you as patrons uh, while keeping everything free for, for everyone as well. So yeah, some exclusive paint sketchbook tours coming your way soon. And thank you so much. And if anyone wants to support the channel, links in the description um, and, and thank you. But thanks for just being here, you know, thanks for liking, subscribing and, and, and just drawing with me. It's, it's so much fun. Um, hope you enjoy. So uh, this week's challenge. Right, this is a bit of a funny one. So this week's challenge, just, just want to remind you guys, send your work in, hashtag Jake's Art Club and we'll get it on the stream, okay? Can't wait to see what you've sketched. Right, this week's challenge, we're gonna draw or paint a scene from a different angle to how you're viewing it. Okay, so if you see that little diagram there, we've got the object, the thing, the scene that we're gonna draw and our viewpoint. And we're gonna be, what we're gonna be drawing is from a different viewpoint. Okay, so use your knowledge of perspective and the structure of objects to turn them in space. Okay, so we're gonna, we are essentially drawing from a different, different angle. Drawing, doing this from life works the best. Okay, you can do it from photos like we've been doing. And if you want to do that, that's absolutely fine. But if you can get out, you know, go draw like, you know, the, the town hall or something, uh, but from a different angle, give that a go too. Drawing from life is just so much more uh, beneficial for the, for, the, for the problem solving. Uh, it's going to be great practice for building your visual library and long-term memory. So you've got to tell 13th of September to to give that a go. You can join in after then as well and, and definitely hashtag your work if you're, if you're viewing this later. Um, but yeah, so just to give you an example, um, uh, here we go. So say I'm gonna draw the head, okay, the head here. So I could be with my sketchbook from this angle sitting and drawing this head, okay? But I know I can see that angle, I know that angle. So instead of that, I'm gonna stay here, draw from here, but I'm gonna imagine viewing the head from here, okay? Or from here, or from above, okay? Um, so you can get creative with your, your angles, you know, maybe you can do kind of like a drone shot, all sorts of things from your imagination and really push the limitations, use what we've, we've learned here today and come up with something that's perhaps a bit unusual, you know, perhaps a bit um, uh, a bit bit different to just the standard landscape shot, the standard you know uh, view of of say Tower Bridge. Everyone views it, everyone sees it from eye level. Perhaps you can do something different. Okay, so I'll chuck that up again. This week's challenge. 
drawing a scene from a different angle to the angle that you're viewing it. Okay, and yeah, don't cheat, don't, let's use this as an exercise. It's gonna be good fun. Um, brilliant. So how are we, how are we doing, Max, with the submissions? Have we got any in the, the, um, oh, where's, where's last week's challenge? Here we go. Let's look at last week's challenge and give you a bit more time. So this, this challenge, wow, it blew me away. We went to the National Geographic Museum, sketched, I sketched a lot of animals and then created, you know, a species from, from them animals. Um, and I think we had a few submissions, but then later this week, you know, earlier this week, they, the submissions were coming in and they are beautiful. They're absolutely fantastic. So let's, let's give it, a, let's give them a, a look. Uh, here's a challenge gallery. So Serenity gave in this fantastic creation. A platypus, leatherback, sea turtle, peacock. The duck-billed feather death. I love it. Really, a few people went for the peacock feathers. And I really love, love that as a, a, an aesthetic. You know, the, I don't know, this, it, this just works so well together, this creature. I love the duck-billed uh, face. You know, really, really cool. Nice, nicely drawn, good sketch, and 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 creative uh, combo. I really hope you enjoyed. Let's have a look at some more. Ah, look at this the 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 hum the hum snarf, the giraffe head, the snake body, and the hummingbird wings. Love this, Mrs. Flower. Well done. So, I was I was uh, I, I, I was thinking about this one. I can imagine it crawling along the desert floor um, like a snake and then instead of you know being really tall like a giraffe and and biting the berries off the tree it just suddenly flies up bites a berry and then goes back down to crawling along the floor I was thinking hmm really really cool combination there and I like the way the the, the snake pattern kind of starts to mix in with the with the giraffe pattern as well ah beautiful so Pigeon Garden sent this one in. Amazing. Honeybee, meerkat, and a hare. Plus book one. <laughs> I love it. Wow. This, so this has got such a delicate pencil work. So well thought about. You know, the forms are fantastic. I love the shadow underneath the legs. You know, that, that just beautiful work. And I, I was really blown away when this this one was sent in so just fantastic really well done um i love the design i love the patterns in the fur i think you you've you've really nailed the texture of them wings as well they look like like wings don't they they're the honeybee wings and yeah really cool pose i love the the, the, the head looks solid Really cool. And is that a monocle there? Is that like, is that what you mean by bookworm? <laughs> it looks it looks kind of uh, established, doesn't it? Like a, like he's reading some books. Excellent sketch. Oh, this one, buddy pen. I love this. So, can you imagine this gorilla head flying around with these big butterfly wings, uh, with these kind of like funny kind of tentacles, kind of sort of grabbing stuff and lifting off. I can just, I can just imagine that, and and the fact that you know there not there are not many flying things with like real expressive faces, are there? You know, and the fact that this gorilla is going to be really looking at you and kind of like, you know, wondering if if you've got food or something as he's flying over the top of you. I just love it. <laughs> really, really nice, Corey. Love it. Good, good, uh, good pencil sketch work as well. Good, good building up of the of the uh, the coloured pencils there. Right, Laura put, sent this one in. I love this combination. And she did. She actually did loads of them. So go and check this out. Go and check out the, the Jake's Art Club hashtag and give these, these artworks some love because I, you know, all of the submissions are fantastic. Uh, this one is just so out there. Just, yeah, I love it. It's just this lion frog thing. <laughs> I just love it. The giant flutterfunt. Oh no, wait, what are we on now? We're on the, 
the lioness, poison dart frog, and the chicken. The poison chicken, yes. <laughs> just amazing and I think Laura painted one of these as well so go and check out her, her, her works it's brilliant ah oh, fantastic these come these are so well done like a, a really nice illustrative style and this is so cute this is what is this we've got the, the mon molly monlidi a combination of a mongolese lion and a deer awesome random animal generator I love it I'll, uh, we should use some more random generators uh, to get some ideas. That's great. Really nicely done. It's perfectly drawn in that sketchbook. You know, I was saying that how to, to Dally Doodles, how I love the, the coloured lines. You know, if that was a, there were black lines there, it would perhaps look a bit harsh. But the coloured lines look wonderful. You know, they really add to the character of this this creature. So. Absolutely brilliant. Well done. Wow, look at this. This is awesome. So Lucy, Lucy's sketch. Lucy, your your drawings have come on so much. This is amazing. Laura's been, Lucy's been doing a, a, a year challenge, 366 days of drawing. And this is day 243. And wow, really, really coming on. Like, I love this idea of the spider legs, you know, like extra legs. He's already got legs, but he's got extra legs. Maybe they're for like climbing and, and attacking or something. Absolutely love it. Brilliant. Oh, another one by Dally Doodles. Really nice owl. Cute little face. And them eyes really pop, don't they? Really pop. So these guys, these creatures, I was blown away. Look at this one lovely delicate shading we've got uh, a fox owl a fox an owl and a deer love it beautiful mixed media i love them little touches of white and that beak there the ears are nicely done a little bit of purple on the back really cool oh kerry so this one kind of blew me away so this is Kerry Kerry does a lot of life life drawing and, and painting from life um, you know figures and so she's incorporated that in the challenge and this just looks brilliant look this kind of seaweed um, world that the, 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 the mermaids in so what have we got here we've got a mermaid um, what are the other animals we've got like a like a fox foxtail and like a bird like a like almost like a mask on there that's that's kind of like oh is it a mask or is it actually a, like that creature and i love the way that the mermaid scales are, are, are you know going around the body just beautiful kerry your work always fascinates me and yeah just it's wonderful yeah laura says it's wonderful it is <laughs> Well done. Oh, cool. Look at this. So, pick a low dial. The three times animal challenge. Look, I love this. Really cool. Really, really cool. Just them, them pig ears coming out of this shark. It's just amazing. And really nice texture on the, on the scales there. On this crocodile arms. Really nice that you put in a human to scale. I wouldn't like to be that person diving. Love it. Absolutely love it. And there's the beginning one. So guys, um, go and check out the, the these works on the, on the hashtag Jake's Art Club. Give them some love. And and uh, yeah, amazing. And if you join in with the challenge next week, we'll get a chance to review your work. So have we got any sketches to look at? I just, yeah, we've got some sketches lined up. I just think one of the, the questions around the challenges is that there's no time limit. So if you've yeah, missed yeah. a challenge and you want to do one, join in yeah you know if you want to if you want to have a go with brilliant max thanks if, if, if you want to have a go with the combination the challenge please do you know we, we're, we're planning on doing uh there's no time limit you know we, we're if, if you want to we're, we're planning on doing um like challenge catch-up uh videos where we where we respond to uh submissions old and new and so if you if you fancy giving it a go 
community's there and uh, yeah, we, we can't wait to see your work. So whichever challenges you want to go, go for, give it a go. Um, let's have a look then, view a gallery, let's see what we've done today. Um, da, 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 da. Let me just load up the gallery. Here we go. Excited to see these. Ah, Jenny B. Jenny B art. Lovely little daddy. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Really understood them simple shapes. Put it together in a nice little pose. Really cute. Even a bit of shading. Wonderful. Really wonderful. Love it. Love it. Oh, bikes. Here we go. Depression to Exhilaration by Peace Jews. Where, where did we start? Bike one, up the top. Bike five. Wow. Okay, so that's really giving you some confidence, hasn't it? Look at that. It's climbing up a hill. You've got some perspective in there. You know, even the you did the you know, the same thing with me with the with the with the bike poles the 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 frame of the bike got that triangle the wrong wrong way round it's really easily done right but now you've understood it you've got it brilliant I'm really glad that's worked out well done well done love it good bit of like you know advertising <laughs> not that they can't sell bikes at the moment I don't think you can get hold of bikes right. Oh, I love the teddy bear. Loads of different perspectives and 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 little poses. Really cool. Really cool. Well done, Mrs. Flower. Thanks for sending it in. Uh, Boozer, Boozer Gaming. Done a crabbins. I love. I love this. <laughs> this is awesome. Oh, I love it. Look at them lips. You've got this, the eyes on the sticks and everything. That's really cool. I'd love to know which one that was. Was that the beginning one or the, or the one at the end? Really cool. Sarah Sarah Hawkins, Bob the Dancing, the Dancing Bear. Love it. So really putting in your own costumes and your own, and your own you know, expressions. Got that box nose. Really cool. So hopefully using these simple shapes has kind of opened up your your creativity. So when you go to that sketchbook, you can be more creative and, and just put down what, what's coming to your mind instead of instead of being limited by, oh, actually, let's find a reference. You know, we can start to play with these shapes. Um, Poppy, wonderful, wonderful Poppy. Ella, oh, look, oh, it's so cute. Just sitting down, looks like it wants some honey. <laughs> First time I managed to draw a teddy teddy bear. Brilliant, wonderful. I'm really glad. You got, and I love that you've got the um, the Winnie the Pooh rubber as well. That's fantastic. <laughs> love it. Good, good, um, good contour lines wrapping round, so you can find the centre of the face there. Really nice. Um, yeah. Really good fun drawing that bear, wasn't it? What have we got here? Hellstrike. Well done, Ella. That was fantastic. Um, Hellstrike. We've got studies and sketches of the crabs. Love it. Really cool. Really kind of descriptive. Um, I can't wait to look through all of the slides of these these um, these posts because uh, I'm only seeing a snapshot here of what you've submitted. But really nice. It looks like you've really, you know, kind of got the description worked out, worked out that that what how the arms and legs and everything are connecting. You know, them them claws look really uh, menacing and really really uh, really well drawn. Really, the form is great. Well done. What have we got here? Perspective is so difficult. I can only imagine well what I eat, not Teddy. <laughs> This is no, these are great, buddy pen. You've done you've done fantastically. I love that you've used the perspective lines on the helicopter. It's really nice. Um, the crabs the crabs are looking great. They're looking, you know, like really thought about, really solid. And the Ted is cute as well. You know, you've got some some nice little 
simple forms put together, I think you've done really well. I think you should, don't be hard on yourself. You know, this is seriously difficult uh, to draw from your imagination and we're, we're doing fantastically. And there's the first one, Jenny B. Brilliant. I wonder if we've got any more. Have we got any more, Max? Let's see what he says, I'll have a look. Dun, 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 dun. I think that's it, right? That's it? Cool. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed. Next week, we're using limitation to boost our creativity. Okay, so bring a pencil in your sketchbook. We might be using some paints as well. So if you've got some acrylic paints or some oil paints or some gouache or something like that, we might use that in the second half too. So, yeah, thanks so much. And I hope this has helped you uh, on your journey to drawing from imagination. Um, what else? What have I, I got anything to say? No. Just um, have fun with the challenge this week. I'm going to try and put out a challenge video uh, for you to, to see as well. And I'll see you in see you in two weeks. See you guys. Thanks so much. It's great fun.